Andy here again with the Fence Post Final Channel, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about why your record might be skipping and some things to think about or do to check what might be causing it and how to fix it. At the end of the video, I'm going to share which one I find more often than not with my extensive record collection. One complaint a lot of people have about vinyl records is their fragility, and that means that it comes with the potential of skips and repeats. What is a skip? It's where the stylus jumps forward a little bit on the record. A repeat is pretty much the same thing except it jumps backwards, and so you get this repeating noise with each cycle the record turns. So what causes this? Can it be fixed? And how can you fix it? Well, let's dig into that a little bit. There are a few things that can cause your record to skip. The most common is probably scratches and blemishes on the vinyl itself. As you're watching the record turn, find that point where it's skipping, pull off the record, and take a look at the vinyl itself. Look at the grooves, kind of rotate it to see, are there scratches that could be causing this to skip? If so, you might be out of luck. You might also find that maybe there aren't scratches, but there's something else that could be causing the skip or the repeat, and that is dust and dirt in the grooves. This can happen during the manufacturing process, or it can happen through storage or leaving it on your turntable in a room that has a lot of dust floating around. With that, you just gotta clean your records, and I'll save those tips for another video. Another thing that can cause your records to skip is warped vinyl. A warped record basically means it does not sit flat on the platter of your turntable. And as you turn it on, you can just kind of see it waving a little bit as it rotates on the turntable. Now there's not much you can do for warped vinyl, although some people do say that you can fix it. I've never tried it myself, and I wouldn't tell you to go and try it on your own. Take a look at some of their videos, and if you try it, come back and let me know how it goes. I'm not convinced. Next has to do with the turntable itself. If it's an older turntable, or if you've used it for many, many years, you might have a worn stylus. Now, the stylus is that part that connects to the record. When you sit down that tone arm on the record, it's the one part that touches it, and as time goes, that can wear and need replacement. Yes, a worn stylus can indeed cause skipping, or at least create an increase in skipping on some of your records. With that, it's simple. Get a replacement. Consult your turntable's manufacturer instructions, take a look at online, what might fit your particular turntable, and so forth. It's, it's going to depend on the connection point between the stylus and the tone arm. That can vary a little bit. I don't believe it's standardized across all turntables, especially a lot of the older ones. And then the final one is balancing your tone arm. The tone arm is the part that connects the stylus to the turntable. That is balanced precisely for your turntable. When you are looking to adjust the counterweight, that's that weight at the end that you can see me adjusting here and putting on here, you want to be very careful. Too heavy and it can damage the stylus and the vinyl. Both of those things, and you don't want either of those. Too light, well, that's the issue that you're having. It's, it's too light, and therefore it can increase the presence of skipping on your records, even though the records really shouldn't skip. Now, this varies from turntable to turntable, and it's going to depend on the weight of the tone arm, the weight of the stylus, and, honestly, the weight of your counterweight. Those things are going to basically determine where you want to put that counterweight. If this is the culprit, consult the instruction manual, seek out instruction manuals online if you don't have one. For vintage ones, this can also become a little bit problematic. So you can also take it to a vintage electronics specialist and get tips from them or just have them fix it as well. You can adjust it closer in, which I believe is the way that it makes it heavier on the stylus and the and the turntable contact point. But once again, remember, you would just want to do this just a little bit. You don't want to put additional wear and damage on your vinyl. Personally, if it was me and I can 
afford to take it to a vintage specialist, I would. One additional item that I didn't really think about until doing some additional research is the lowering of the cue. When lowered all the way, make sure that the cue arm that raises and lowers actually goes all the way down. Once it stops dropping, it, there needs to be a gap there. So as you can see on this particular one, I've got a really nice comfortable gap between the Q arm and the tone arm. That means that, that it is all the way down. Now, if it's touching or it appears to be touching, just press down on that Q arm a little bit and, and hopefully that will resolve the issue. If not, you might need to get something to place underneath the slip mat, which is that kind of protective felt or acrylic piece that uh, protects the vinyl itself and keeps it from slipping to help raise up the vinyl a little bit and keep that cue arm from, from basically making contact with the tone arm. One additional thing, if you're not using a slip mat, you really should be. What is a slip mat? Well, it's, it's this nice little mat that keeps the vinyl from slipping as the turntable spins. All right, as promised at the beginning of the video, I've got over 2,000 records right here, and I come across skips every so often in my collection. Things that weren't there before. And I am very careful with my records, the way I handle them and all of that. So what do I find as the culprit more often than not? It's simple, it's dust and dirt that gets in the grooves. And that can be simply managed by cleaning your records frequently. Before you play it, after you play it, whatever is your preferred method, just keep them clean. And I'll share a few different methods that I use to clean my records in a future video. One final thing I'll point out is you have PVC sleeves like this one right here. Now you can see that I have removed this completely from the PVC sleeve. The PVC sleeves are notorious for picture discs and picture discs are also notorious for having skipping issues. Removing the vinyl from these can help keep your vinyl for a long time and you can see that I have done just that. I have them in the nice kind of anti-static inner sleeves that I use for a lot of my other vinyl. And if you'd like to watch the video on how to store and protect your vinyl records, you can do that right up here and check that out next. I am Andy, this is the Fence Post Vinyl Channel, and I'll see you in the next video.